morning, everybody. My name is Matthew Laidlaw, and uh, I want to begin by sharing a brief section from a poem that will serve uh, as a bit of a bookend uh, to what I'd like to share this morning. So uh, it's found uh, on your little uh, order or, or bulletin that you have with you, and it's uh, from A Great Wagon uh, by Rumi, the ancient Sufi mystic teacher poet. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing, there's a field. I'll meet you there. When the soul lies down in that grass, the world is too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other doesn't make any sense. I'm very grateful uh, for the opportunity to join you all this morning. Um, I was a guest teacher here, I think in September of 2018, on very short notice, uh, I filled in for Kent, who couldn't make it because of a, an urgent personal matter. I'd actually been camping with my family in Holland, and we showed up smelling like campfire and clothes we'd been wearing for three days. Um, and I remember uh, that morning after being introduced, walking up front and looking around and saying, uh, this is weird. And I said it a few times, and you laughed, and I laughed, and then I said it again. This is weird. Um, because it was weird, and it, it still is. Um, while I've only spoken here once before, um, and I've only attended in person a handful of times, um, my life has had a strange uh, connection and intersection to this community um, really for over two decades in some really random ways. So it's weird. <laughs> it's weird that I'm here, and maybe sometime I'll be able to share a little more about why. Uh, but beyond the weirdness, um, I feel so much gratitude for the chance to be here with you all this morning. So thank you so much uh, for having me and my family here. Um, this morning, I want to offer um, a small contribution to your series, We Have Questions, which I think is such a brilliant idea for a teaching series. It's honest. It's provocative, and it goes against the grain of spiritual and religious culture here in West Michigan. And I feel like it represents the openness of this community, the growth mindset that exists here, the curiosity, the humility, all of which I love and helps me to feel right at home. Uh, during this series, you've all grappled with some really important questions. How do we best live a fulfilling life? What if there's no evil source for the cruelty we impose on each other? Where do we go from here? How do I travel responsibly? What if this isn't a problem? What do the margins teach us? What happens when old maps no longer work? What's the point of the religious life? Is the unconscious real? Does beauty matter? How do we grow into ancestors? What do we mean by trauma? Do we even know what we mean by God anymore? You know, keeping it light here at, at C3. <laughs> These are just some of the questions from the past nine months on the journey you've all been on, posed by Kent and by others. These are good questions. Um, but I think there's one glaring, vital, existential question that so many of us have right now and that yet hasn't been addressed by this community. One question that is so important, it might feel like the fate of the universe is hanging in the balance. Is it cake? <laughs> is it cake? Is it cake? Now, for a few of you, this might likely be a familiar question. But I'm wondering if for most of us, you're wondering what's happening right now. Is the fate of the universe really hanging in the balance based on this question? Is it cake? So let's get all caught up together, okay? So in, on March 18, 2022, the show Is It Cake premiered on Netflix. Here's the listed description of the show. Mikey Day hosts a baking contest during which skilled artists create mouth-watering rep replicas of handbags, sewing machines, and other objects. That's the description of the show. 
And then what happens after these cake artists make their replicas of everyday items? Contestants on the show have to guess whether or not the object is cake. Is that a handbag? Or is that a replica of a handbag made out of cake? And once the contestants, usually like random people are like B-level celebrities or like C-level celebrities, once all these contests have placed their guests, the host, Mikey Day, who's also a cast member on Saturday Night Live, he takes out a giant knife and slices into the object. And in that moment, you discover whether or not it's in fact a $1,000 purse or an amazingly decorated cake. And that's it. That's the show. How many of us have seen the show? A few of us. My kids are back raising their hands real high, okay? Here's the thing. People really like this show. It's supremely popular with a bit of a niche following. In fact, they've released two seasons of this show now. Um, now, I didn't come to C3 just to be an Is It Cake brand ambassador. Um, and I want to be clear that I'm not receiving any financial compensation from Netflix for talking about this. Um, in fact, I am not even fully endorsing the show. I'm just mentioning that it exists and that people like it, okay? Um, but the reason I want to talk about Is It Cake is because I think it is representative of something much larger happening in our society right now. So let's explore that together a little bit, okay? Why is Is It Cake popular? A couple thoughts. First, on the surface, base level, it's an absurd premise, right? It's silly and it's fun. And to like be in the room when someone pitched the idea for the show in the first place would be incredible. It's ridiculous, okay? Second, the artistry is amazing. Like, is that actually a perfectly smoked brisket or is it cake? Wow, it's cake. That's incredible. It taps into our creative impulses. Human beings are so incredibly and uniquely talented. Not even, not like, somebody thought of this show and then they made it. And also, people can make cakes that look like smoked, perfectly smoked brisket to the level that people can't guess what it is. It's incredible. Human beings are amazing. Third, it also taps into our destructive impulses. Like, whether or not this is a cake that someone spent days on, or it's a pair of designer boots, we're going to find out by slicing into it with a giant knife. And we love it. Fourth, maybe on a little deeper level here, life is not easy. It's hard work being a human being. Our days are filled with meetings and emails, and texts, and doctor's appointments, and paying bills, and shuttling kids around like we're their personal Uber drivers, and arguments, and preparing meals, and injuries, and illness, and exercise, and beauty, and pain, and hope, and despair, and having to make difficult decisions, and at the end of the day, kicking back, numbing out, and just having to decide whether or not something is cake feels really nice and relaxing. And finally, on a much deeper level, I think the premise of is it cake taps into something within us on a primal level. Like baseline human consciousness, foundational aspect of human evolution. And that's what I want to explore for a few minutes. Because throughout most of human history, humans have survived by asking and answering questions like, is it cake? Is it cake or is it not cake? Is this food or is this not food? Because if I'm wrong, I'm going to die. Is this safe or is this not safe? Can I trust this person? Can I not trust this person? Is this person part of my tribe or is this person not a part of my tribe? Is this person my friend or is this person my enemy? From an evolutionary perspective, this kind of, is it cake, is it not cake, in, out, black, white, up, down, left, right, binary approach to the world is what has kept us alive. We would not have survived as a species if we didn't operate fundamentally from that level of consciousness and how we interacted with the world. We had to see the world this way. In fact, this is how 
most kids see the world, um, which is probably why they like the show Is It Cake? Um, when kids line up their ac- action figures on the floor or their cars on the floor, there's usually two sides, right? The good guys, the bad guys. Cake, not cake. The Is It Cake way of thinking reflects baseline human consciousness, not just like at the origin of what it, of the, the human species, but also like the origins of each of our lives. This is how we operated, most of us, when we were young. What's also true is that um, it's not just our ancestors who saw the world this way in order to survive, and it's not just our children who naturally see the world this way. Many of us, most of us, still see the world this way. Because as a species and as individuals, we're all still in the process of growing up. And we force and filter most of our experiences into this binary way of thinking. Cake, not cake. Left, right. Black, white. Progressive, conservative. Republican, Democrat. Racist, anti-racist. In, out. Good, evil, with us, against us. Right, wrong. In news sources, in religion, in social media, in politics, and every algorithm we inhabit are all appealing to this baseline level of human consciousness, inviting to see the world in one, in one of these two categories, and often pressuring us to take a stand or a stance or a position in one of these two categories. And just like it did for our ancestors, this way of seeing the world is providing clarity and certainty and belonging and safety. But also, the is it cake way of seeing the world that helped us evolve and kept us alive, I think is now also threatening to destroy us. Because what's true is that some things are either cake or not cake. It's either brisket or it's not, right? It's either cake or it's not. But what's also true is that most things, much of life in the modern world, doesn't actually quite fit neatly into a cake or not cake sort of category. Most people... In fact, I'll say all people cannot be reduced or simplified into a cake or not cake sort of category. And this isn't like a both sidesism or like a false moral equivalence. It's the recognition that many things in life aren't actually clear. They aren't as clear as like what our baseline consciousness is intuiting to us, and it's not as clear as what everything outside of us is trying to tell us that it is. Even when something is clear to most of us, it still transcends those two simple categories. If we want to keep it to food, somebody (laughs) on... uh, I was eating lunch with somebody a few months ago, and there was a debate at the lunch table going on about whether or not a Pop-Tart is ravioli. (laughs) That they were, they had figured out that like all foods could be like reduced to like three or four categories, sandwiches, ravioli, and like something else. I'm misrepresenting this conversation. Um, But it was like, a Pop-Tart is a ravioli. And it was like, okay, Maybe, and there was a very animated lunch conversation. It was interesting. One of the more interesting lunch conversations I'd had in a while. Um, But even if we can agree that a Pop-Tart is a ravioli, it's still not that simple, right? It's still more than that. I don't believe that ultimately, ultimate reality, the actual world we inhabit, the actual people we encounter, can be reduced to cake or not cake. I don't think it can be broken down that simply. Here's what I mean. So I want to invite you to to take your finger and point it up at the ceiling. Find a spot uh, somewhere on the ceiling where you you can point your finger and just keep it pointed um, in that area. 
And I want to invite you to start turning your finger sort of around the spot you identify in a clockwise direction, like a loop. So pick a light or a, a dot on the ceiling tile or an intersection of the trim and just circle it in a clockwise direction, like a loop. And keep spinning and make sure you're spinning clockwise. Okay, which way, which direction is your finger spinning? Tell me. Clockwise? Okay. You sure about that? Okay, I want you to keep spinning in the same direction. This is where things get challenging, so bear with me here, okay? Keep spinning in the same direction. But as you keep spinning, I want you to lower your hand slowly. Slowly moving it past your face, down in front of your chest. Keep spinning your hand in the same direction. And look down. Which way is your hand rotating? Now look down like this. Look at me. Keep it spinning the same direction. Which way is it spinning now? Which way is your finger spinning? Counterclockwise. Are you sure? Do we need to do it again? <laughs> okay. Well, is it cake or not cake? Which one is it? Isn't it simple? Isn't it clear? Isn't it black and white? If, if you're willing and you're able, um, stand up where you are for a moment. And let's make a little like line between, sorry, I stepped away from the microphone here. Let's divide the room like right here. So if you're on this side, I want you to turn a little bit and face everybody on this side of the room. And if you're on this side of the line, I want you to turn a little bit and face everybody over here, okay? Now, I don't want you to point at anybody where you are, but I want you to point at something in the direction that you're facing and do the same thing again. Find a spot and point and go clockwise, okay? Keep doing it. All right, to my friends who are over here, which way are they moving their finger? Okay, but over here, which way are you moving your finger? Clockwise. Okay, friends over here, which way are you rotating your finger? Friends over here, which way are they rotating their finger? Are you sure? Are you sure? Isn't it simple? Isn't it clear? Like, who's right? You can sit down if you'd like. Who's right? Now, the only way to resolve this is for each side of the room to start their own religion and political party and cable news station to prove how right you are so it would be clear and simple and safe so that you can belong and so that you can, with a clear conscience, dehumanize the other side in your certainty about the fact that you are rotating your finger clockwise, right? The is it cake way of seeing the world, I don't think actually works on a functional level in the world we're living in right now. I think it's threatening to destroy us. And I'm not telling you anything that you don't already know. But friends, this is why I think a community like C3 is so important. Why I think it's so necessary for a community like C3 to exist and why we need more communities like C3 in the world. Because we can all do our own personal work of learning and growing, of participating in practices that help us experience our own transformation. We can do our own work of trying to transcend an is it cake way of seeing the world. We can sit on our mats and meditate until we are levitating and try and transcend and achieve non-dual consciousness, and we should all do that. We should pursue that. It's important, and it's vital work. And we can all get involved. We can get involved in education initiatives, in advocacy, in protests, in policy change. We can try to bring about change on a systemic level that might help us break out of an is-it-cake way of seeing each other in the world. And we should pursue that. And I know both of those things are happening here at C3 and in each of your lives. But we can do both of those things and still be primarily stuck 
in our own algorithms of confirmation bias. We can still live in our own relationships where we all see everything the same and have our own little homogenous relationships in communities where we all can agree on what, what's cake and what's not. But a, a spiritual community like C3 can be a space where a different kind of transformation can take place. Where we can not only encounter different perspectives, but actually engage the people who hold these perspectives. These perspectives that are different than our own. And we can engage these people and we can actually be in a space where we try to work it out together. Like if I would have just stopped talking for a moment and then said, okay, friends, on this side of the room, talk to the people on this side of the room. And people on this side of the room, talk to the people on this side of the room and try and work out what on earth is happening and why we're seeing reality so differently right now. A spiritual community can be a place where we can engage debate, without divisiveness and polarization. A spiritual community can be a place where inclusivity actually means that all people are included and that all perspectives are actually engaged. A spiritual community can be a place where we learn how to be humble because we learn together that every point of view is actually a view from a point. A spiritual community can be a place where we don't have to agree on whether or not it's cake. And we can still find common ground and love one another and try to make a difference together. A spiritual community can be a place where we rehumanize rather than dehumanize, where we can figure out what it means to be a human being in relationship with other human beings, regardless of our perspectives and because of our differing perspectives. I help lead a, a small spiritual community in Grand Rapids that in a lot of ways feels similar to C3. And I know that the past few years haven't been easy for communities like ours. The bigger conversations in the world around us, the is it cake rigidity of seeing the world in that way has made it difficult to, to hold things together. And oh yeah, COVID happened too. <laughs> It's taken its toll. Budgets are tight. Participation is sporadic. It's hard for a community to even know like, sort of who we are in a moment like this. Who's really a part of this thing? And all of you at C3 here are in the, the middle of some transitions in leadership. There's some unknowns, and some of you might be feeling uneasy or unsure about the future here. That would be understandable. But I believe the world needs C3 in that you all have a unique role to play here in Grand Haven and on the lakeshore and on a much larger scale than you might even be able to imagine. Because we don't actually live in an is it cake world and we need more spaces like this where people can discover that together. I believe that about C3 and I hope you do too. So as I conclude uh, my contribution to this gathering this morning, I want to invite us to hear these words from Rumi again um, with a few of my, my humble edits. Out beyond ideas of wrongdoing and rightdoing. Out beyond our ideas of whether or not it's cake or not cake. There's a spiritual community called C3. I'll meet you there. When our souls find rest there, our ways of making sense of the world are too full to talk about. Ideas, language, even the phrase each other, they just don't make any sense anymore. Thank you. Thank you.